Hello everyone, I'm ExtraCheese87 and this is Let's Play Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Part 4. In the previous video, we had to explain something to the court. Uh, I don't really remember, it's been several days since I recorded that first uh, batch of videos, but I'm excited to be back. Let's, uh, let's jump in. Actually, uh, Phoenix has to explain something because we're someone new and different. We are no longer the Phoenix Ranger. I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Eh? You? You put the hat on the dead man's head? That's not right. He had a hat beforehand. You liar. Well, I guess he could have, the hat could have fallen off and then he put it back on. He wore it through our entire poker game. After calling the police when I returned to the scene, his head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in this photograph. I wouldn't really say it's shining bright. I mean, I get it. He doesn't have any hair on the top of his head. I mean... I guess realistically he's just bald, but like, I don't know. Are those just sideburns that go up really high? Or is that, is it connecting with what remains of his hair? And? I picked his hat up off the floor and put it on his head. Why, why, why are you doing anything like that? All I can say is, I'm sorry. But that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. Other than the murder weapon, which I definitely used to kill that guy. So, Misso really didn't see it? It being the victim's, uh, his shiny dome? I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. And that's how I knew he deserved to die, because all bald men are evil. That I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to discriminate, but it's the truth, at least in media. They're all evil, eventually. Ah, here we go again, M Mr. Gavin. Hmm, pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hey, he's still our client, isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gav, I mean, to be fair, if I was a defense attorney and my client was saying, actually, my defense attorney's the one who killed this guy, I wouldn't be too pleased. Now, did this guy probably kill the other guy? I mean, presumably, unless there was actually a secret fifth person in the room, which, I mean, once you add a secret uh, fourth person or third person... What's to stop you? Why don't you just keep going? Actually, there was a whole clown car of people in there. By the time this case is over, we're, over, we're going to learn the whole thing. The whole room was packed. Witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I mean to say you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we, what do you mean lose our attorney's badge? Do you mean like metaphorically speaking? Like we lost our right to practice? Or do they actually take it from us? Because if so... I think maybe Phoenix is allowed to have a little, uh, just like a few free murders. Because that thing was pretty sweet. So losing that would definitely send you into an emotional spiral. Well, you certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was you that threw the first stone. I mean, you did basically accuse the guy of murder, Phoenix. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Eh. When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. But like, how? Like, pop the cork off? Slap that bad boy in there? And when I put the hat on the victim's head? Let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. A reason? That reason is right here. Your cell phone? The cellular signals were reflecting off his bald dome and interfering with your 
get enough fallen out. That at nine. Recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case, I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. Uh, Phoenix, your, your phone speaker is way too ass. We can't hear a damn thing. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Hey, you just said that. Game not going well? Uh, something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? Turned out to be dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Okay. So that's a bit of a telling piece of dialogue, right? Because in theory, I don't know if we have any evidence that says this, but he said that he left before this guy walked in, right? Like they, they had their dinner. He said that he left and he would have saw, he saw the guy coming in, but he should not have known that he was going to challenge Phoenix definitively like that. You could make an argument that like, you can make that assumption that the only reason he would be there is to challenge Phoenix, but he should not have that information. You mean someone cracked that flawless Bona China plate, Pat? Bone China Pat? 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 Well, it wasn't you, was it? Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? Bone China Plate? Did it say plate? I feel like it didn't say plate earlier. I feel like they were they were missing an L. Maybe I just read over the L. Kind of porcelain. Very smooth and shiny. But not plate, but okay, no no no. They they didn't spell it plate. I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. Hmm. Court appreciates the defendant's discretion are not indicating my forehead. Wait a second. Something's not right about that phone call. After Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Borscht Bowl Club. Most certainly. Then, then how did he know? When did he see this, you know, bone china? Oh, that's right. I'm right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Incandescent. Troubled, I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court? Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? I don't know, man. He just kind of has like a bald vibe. Ah, well, shit. I mean, I can't really disagree with that. So this is your reason? The reason why you put the victim's hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? It's come down to this. Has it, Phoenix Wright? Order! I'll have order, Mr. Payne. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear defense attorney Gavin's testimony? Uh, I'm, uh, well, well, as the prosecutor, uh... Very well. We'll break for ten minutes. And I'm going to take a break into a Kit Kat bar in my back room. After which, Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. I'm going to take my Kit Kats and make a cross out of them. Are, are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well. This will be the final recess for today. Unless I get tired midway through, then I might take another recess. This is my world, and you're all just living in it. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber. Who'd have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Oh, you're the daughter, apparently. I don't know if I buy that Phoenix Wright fucks, man. <laughs> I just, I don't believe it. Huh? What? Hello, sir. Please pick a card. What's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Wrong. Wrong card. Pick another one. Okay. Excellent. I have a message for you. You will die in seven days. 
the last hand is about to be played. You need a trump card to make it. Oh, hence the name of the case. A trump card? The card you have chosen is magical. Does it summon the blue eyes white dragon? Please. Use it wisely and the game is yours. That's all. The mirror force? An ace? Where do I remember that card from? I guess that's the one that was designated. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces and Mr. Wright's two. It has five aces in all. It's true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. It was cheating. I swear to you. It's a, it's a Capcom on it as well. The missing fifth ace. Wait, this blotch of red. Is this... Blood? You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw the truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding the truth. I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. That girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? Come on, Apollo, are you really this? That's that I made the connection, okay. Received from a mysterious girl. Ward will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? Well then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Um, well, uh, Mr. The, the, Mr. The Witness, state his name and occupation? I literally just said it. This is far as necessary, Your Honor. Believe me, far stranger things have gone on in this courtroom. One time we had a clown in here. Fine, I'll play along. First, one thing we need to have made clear. How do you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. And therefore evil. <laughs> Forgive my curiosity, but what is this about this fellow's head? Your Honor seems to have an inordinate interest in it. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't call it an order, Mr. Gavin. Holy shit, he knows how to work the boombox! He remembers. <laughs> he brought in his own tape, popped that bad boy in there for some classic tunes. Uh, Mr. Wright? What do you think you're doing, Wright? Wow, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? I don't think you can be there. <laughs> Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. Victim wore that hat on night, never once taking it off except for that one time. That one time? Being the instant he was hit. Uh, no, actually during our game he took it off and tried to shine the light in my face so I would, uh, get thrown off my game. Oh! Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and uh, placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, he would have had to be at the scene of the crime, at the time of the crime. In other words, you'd have to be the real killer. Is what you're trying to say? Not bad, Apollo. Oh no, he's evil laughing. Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. What? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all. To protect my client, Mr. Wright. Yet I'm afraid of the current situation. I don't see little reason to hide anything. Very well. I'm going to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Finally! You may begin your testimony. Tell us. How were you involved in the events of that fateful evening? Or night? Or whatever? 
This was early evening. It was pretty night. It was actually almost morning. That fateful night. The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. Must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. Bald head, an unconscious girl, and right holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, and so I left. That's when the call came from Wright. You witnessed the murder? I mean, uh, you witnessed the murder. Could you think you could see his head from the little window? Mmm. In theory, yes. For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, I gotta remind you, you're on Mr. Wright's defense team. Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous. It's bad for your client. What else can I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright. You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Uh... Like, would you even be able to see through the window? I mean, it looks kind of open. But, like, wasn't it, like, 2 in the morning? I don't know, I feel like you wouldn't be able to get a good look in. Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Uh, who the hell is Mr. Justice? Wait, is that me? Uh, y yes, Your Honor. Can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial's getting weirder and weirder. All right, Apollo, hit him with a vibe check. Oh God, my HP, <laughs> it's very sick. Oh, maybe we should uh, save the video game real quick. Yeah, I'm just gonna, gonna pop that on. I don't need to turn to the title screen. That man, you mean Mr. Smith? He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say. I know he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. Only you knew the true nature of your client's job. Of course, but I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Yes. As previously mentioned, we are not promoting gambling, okay? We've got to cover our bases. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might be someone coming to settle an old score. I see. What happened then? You're being impressed? I'm impressing you? The little window? You mean the one used to keep watch up, up on the stairs? Yes, yeah, a relic of the ancient past. The black marketeers used it, I believe. Wait, it's to watch the stairs? Well, how would that help you see in? Because, yeah. I mean, that makes a little bit more sense, because I was kind of wondering, because I was thinking it was a window to the outside, which I didn't really get because they said they were underground. But sometimes things can, like, like, the way buildings work, right? Like, sometimes a below ground level can still be kind of level with the ground. You know, if it's, like, built on, like, a hill or something. And then why would you have the window facing out if there's no entrance there? So that makes a bit more sense, like structurally but like he walked down the thing and then got here to look in that seems unlikely well, how'd you go through the trouble of peeking in through the window wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room I didn't want to upset right you see upset Mr. Wright yes what if my fears have been unfounded I'd be walking in another match bad form to say the least Hmm, so far everything he's saying makes sense. 
right after the murder took place. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really, no need to shout justice. I was just getting to that part of my testimony. Ah, there he is, the coolest defense in the West we know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, some things never change. I was afraid you changed too, right? But you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. Friends like these, who needs enemies? By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene. Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. But wait. This says the hat was removed during the investigation. During the investigation. I saw his head when he was dead. And then Mr. Wright came along and replaced his hat. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? I mean, I don't know if that would count as a contradiction, saying that... I mean, it says the hat wasn't removed until the investigation, but, I mean... It's not necessarily a lie that the hat could have been removed and then it looked just like that. Those are the only... Because, I mean... Phoenix has claimed that the hat was on his head at one point, so I don't really feel like that's a lie, but it is kind of a contradiction in like the very, very literal sense. Those were the only three at the scene of the crime? Yes, as far as I saw at least. And we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant. Phoenix right. Who else could it have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, I didn't feel like it. My office was asked to defend right. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Objection! There must have been someone else at the moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one, not a soul. But that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Yes, this mysterious fourth person, who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap the cards in the victim's hand? Hmm, perhaps you can show us why reason why such a thing would be necessary? How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? I don't know, man. <laughs> but what you got for me? It's red. A single drop of blood marks the front of the card. So they would swap so if it had presumably blood on it, even though part of me's like I feel like it's not blood, like I don't know, it just doesn't seem very bloody to me. But until we're told differently, we assume it's a drop of blood. But if there was blood on the card, then that would mean Phoenix lied about what he did with the card then, right? Because if it was in the bottle, how's it going to get blood on it? I mean, I feel like presenting this card doesn't really do anything. But the fact that it has blood on it seems kind of important.
because I mean, let, let me re-familiarize myself with the with the case flow again, because it has been like three days since I recorded that first batch of videos. So the story as we know it is, well, no, 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 it's the fifth of hearts that's supposed to be in the bottle, not the ace. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that that was me misremembering, because she slipped the fifth of the five of hearts into Phoenix's jacket. He was supposed to then draw three aces. And that was going to be that they cheated, right? And then they were going to find the, fi the five of hearts in his jacket pocket and be like, hey, you swapped this with the ace. You're a cheater, blah, blah, blah. So this would that wouldn't actually be a contradiction then because it was the five of hearts, not the ace that's supposed to be in the bottle. Um, so you can save on this screen. Let me think for a second again. So can we point to a reason why it was swapped? Because, I mean, I just don't feel like it having blood on it would be... ...that important. Unless, I mean, maybe if the blood... You know, it's someone else's blood. I don't know. Let's just present it. Why not? It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card is swapped out. Go ahead and point your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? Uh, well, you know, uh... All right. Reason is, uh, this? Is that an ace? One second, I need to pause. All right, we're back. Uh, my, my heat was about to make me die. I turned it on to knock the early chill out. But the air conditioning here is not very good at, like, turning on or off by itself. So I was going to melt because it was not turning off. Why is it? It's got blood on it. Right next to the spade! What? This is insane! Why haven't I thought about this? Why? C could this be... Could this be the missing fifth ace? I inconceivable. How could you... Isn't this supposed to be shown to us in Discovery or something? Pretty sure this is illegal. What are you doing with that card? Um... Well, that's the saying. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It is just a fishy card from some fishy girl. That card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Bush Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. Gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. No, <laughs> impossible. Unacceptable. The court can't accept this and the evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? What? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... for the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime? Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo, and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor, and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down to the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood, but why? <laughs> Regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right, regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, okay, at least they call it out. <laughs> we can discuss the finer points of our legal, sy legal system, like, but like, no, literally, you like wouldn't be allowed to like present it, like, at least in this fashion. What's important now is that I've answered your question. 
Like, it's not like, oh, you'll get fined. It's like the whole case will be, like, declared a mistrial, and you'll have to redo the whole thing again. And then the prosecutor will be like, ah, you know, uh, we didn't win last time, so maybe we'll just drop it, and then they go free. Shit matters, man. I mean, not really, but uh, for the purposes of having a fun legal story, but what are you talking about? You wanted to know what a killer would have taken a car from the crime scene? And now I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection. But like, would it? <laughs> Why would it be concise? The dude who got brain bled some? Because I mean, if it's that guy's blood, Am I missing something? Why would that be a big deal? This blood confirms that the guy we know is dead is actually dead. This is baseless conjecture. Baseless. Objection. I do like the, the different, like the, the classic objection. I assure you it's quite base. <laughs> That's, that's great. That's, that's, um, mm -hmm. Yep. It is quite based after all. What? Amazing, really? How a single drop of blood on a single car can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? <laughs> oh, God, no. He's doing the thing where they say some nonsense and they're like, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And you're like, no, I don't. Yeah? Try picturing the scene of the crime. In your head, okay? I'm picturing. We spent our entire budget on this 3D rendering. <laughs> the murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there's one decisive problem with this scene. I don't know. How'd the card get there? Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? What are these? I mean, I guess that's O'Reilly, and K is Phoenix? Or wait, is K the guy and V is V? I guess V would be the dude. Yeah. Oh, victim, killer, witness, and then two. The classic members of a, of a criminal trial. The victims, the killers, the witness, the second witness? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? So the ace should have been with chickadee, right? Because the goal was to feed right the extra ace to make it seem like he's cheating. Because it wasn't to give dude an ace so that he wins, it was to make Phoenix look like a cheater. So, in theory, if this is the missing ace, it would have either been... It would have been on Phoenix's side of the board? Or would have been on... Still with the witness? But, like, at the time of the killing, they would have... Presented the card. Because I can't remember, did they act... Because they actually searched him, right? So he had the three aces, and they're like, he's cheating, and they searched to try and find the card, and they couldn't. And then the card got swapped out afterwards. Which means that card should be here. But do I, or do I click on the victim because he shouldn't have the car? Now I've forgotten the question. And trying to remember the facts of the case, I have forgotten the question.
Because what, what's the question? It's it's who doesn't fit with the ace being there. But I feel like because it's either like I can click on Phoenix because the a he should be where the ace is or the ace should be where he is. Or am I picking on the victim because the ace shouldn't be there? I don't know. Isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. You'd think any blood would fall behind the body, not under the table in front of him. I mean, yeah, I was thinking that the cards... Well, I was also, I guess, like, the cards could have went flying during the scuffle. And that's how I ended up over there. Ah! Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, well, right, let me re-familiarize myself with the facts of the case. This is victim Smith's hand. So no, he had three aces. So I guess it was supposed to be that his, like it was supposed to be that his three aces were legitimate. And Phoenix having two aces was supposed to be bad. And then that's why they searched him. Which doesn't really make sense. If you think about it, because you would think the guy with three aces is more sus than the guy with two. He blood in this position. So we were right for kind of the wrong reasons. The blood would fall onto the floor, but not on the cards. That's right. So what does this mean? So let's save again, by the way. No, we don't need to do that. Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. S swivel chairs? Oh, man. Oh, I love a good swivel. Apollo, try turning the chair around. Uh. Chair was facing the other way. It would have to be. We have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. Okay. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing as seen in this photo. That would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We now know the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But, this creates another significant contradiction. Again? Oh yeah, I'm here too, by the way. <laughs> Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location in this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victim, the killer, the witnesses, the second... Okay, 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 okay. So if, at the time of the murder, he was facing away, would he be able to see? I, I'd, I'd see no reason why we would assume he couldn't. And I feel like your line of sight's basically the exact same whether the chair is facing this way or that way. Because he just, he said he saw his head. It's not like he's like, oh, I saw the right arm or something that would be blocked now. What's the question again? Whose location creates a contradiction if the victim was facing away? Because I mean, kind of what I'm thinking is that maybe he wasn't facing, like maybe he, he was just sitting here. Well, no, because his head would still have to be through the back of the thing. I mean, my, my head is saying this, but like, I don't feel like it is. 
Like, my heart says two, but, like... I feel like that doesn't change anything. You'd still have just as clear a line of sight. And then you... I feel like that doesn't change anything either. And then for Phoenix. I mean, it could be the killer. I mean, I guess I'm just kind of stuck on like, why would he be facing away? in the first place. So I feel like it's either K or 2, but like I don't really have a reason for either. You know? But we have to click something, so... What doesn't make sense is the second witness. You mean to say I don't make sense? Uh, no, of course you do, sir. As I thought. Help, oh, okay. For the shot. I thought we actually got it right for a second. I see no need to further prolong this truck. Oh, we failed the fucking tutorial. Oh my god. Court finds the defendant Phoenix right. Guilty. Alright, uh, how do I restart? Or how do I load my save without restarting everything? I'm gonna go a regular trial at the high court within a month's time. Court is adjourned. Okay. I mean, I don't feel so bad because it's really just like I've missed two questions. Let's try it. How far back does this take me? A little hard of hearing. Did you just say something? Would you kind of show the court one more time what you mean? Uh, okay. That, I'm kind of glad they stream on this process. Because, I mean, I don't... Okay, it does give you all your HP back. Because, I mean, I like there being a punishment, in theory, just to kind of add some extra tension so that you can't just spam stuff. But at the same time, actually being punished for the consequences of your actions is more tedious and annoying and just kind of encourages save scum. So, yeah. I, I prefer this, where it's like, you still, you want to get stuff right because of, I guess, bragging rights, especially in a series that's being recorded and potentially more than one person might see, hopefully. That's the, that's the dream. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to say killer this time. I mean, I really, I just, I don't feel like the answer is any of them. Unless it's just, why is the victim facing this way? <laughs> Unless it's just victim twice, which I feel like that actually kind of makes the most sense. The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Then where his indicator currently, well, couldn't he just like, gotten up? <laughs> I mean, like, I guess I'm, I'm, cause like, in my mind, I'm like, the question is, where were they? Like, during the game. But I guess it's it's asking where were they at the actual, like, the time the murder happened? Because my mind, I'm just like, oh, the killer just, like, stood up and walked around the table and bashed his head in. Or, I mean, even if he is facing back like that, I mean, if you struck him over the head, you could still hit his forehead pretty easily. I don't think it'd be quite hard, yes? Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense. Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come to light. Could, could, could you tell me? No. There's something in the diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Bro, stop. Apollo, the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here. Where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. What? What? I mean, I guess saving doesn't matter then. 
we don't have to like, you know, save, scum, reload. There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry. Let's think it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing over the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try and forget everything else. I mean, he'd have to be in front of him. If you just forget everything else. You get points for flair. That, I mean, I, I assume we're saying that like what is there in the diagram wasn't there at the time of the murder. You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. But, uh, okay. I need to point out that standing here would be impossible. Victim is facing a solid cupboard. Okay, okay, actually, maybe we are right. Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit him from above? Uh, actually, they, there was a ball and it, there was like a vent and they, they rolled the ball down and then it came flying up the vent and hit him in the forehead. It's simple logic, really. This is the only place the killer could have been standing. And that means that at that very moment of the crime... Wait, I know! At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there. What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation, right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately. Uh, bailiff, uh, do that. Have them try and move the cupboard. Your Honor. What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. An order of grilled cheese sandwiches. I could go with one of those. Good thinking, Mr. Wright. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. Let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime, and this cupboard wasn't here, which means, Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Screw! So you wouldn't be able to see. Thank you. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it has to have been as shown here. It doesn't have to have been. It could be over here, here, over there. I guess you can't see my mouse pointer. I decided to hide it because I feel like it'd be more distracting for the most part, but it does mean I can't point at stuff. But basically I'm saying is that the cover doesn't necessarily have to have just been slid over. It could be in basically any wall in the room. Because I mean, it's just a cupboard. It's not like you couldn't, you know, pick it up and shimmy it over somewhere. What's this? What is it now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once again. It appears we found another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, dang. Notice something, Apollo? Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now well then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. Is the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness? It would have to be the second witness this time. Okay. I like how this one's like by far the easiest. About this cupboard. Are we okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? It helps my case. Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Ah! That's right, someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Unless they had x-ray vision. Ha <laughs> ha! Mr. Gavin, are you from a pl planet Krypton? What did you say? Is the coolest defense in the West losing a school? Because we are totally in the West. Yes, the West. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was, while the windows to that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain this to the court? Exactly where do you witness the crime scene from? 
Uh, excuse me, your honor. Order. This is a court of law, and I will have order. But here's a little secret for you guys. I don't actually say that. I say that line so often that I actually just have a little recorder, and I press the button, and it plays it back. No? No one cares? All right. Moving on. We've just now received word from our investigative team at the Borscht Bowl Club. You may have wondered how they get there so fast. Uh, shut up. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, Your Honor. Oh, and what do they find? Well, Your Honor, it turns out there's a secret passage behind it. What? <laughs> yes, I believe I've mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks to the room many of our regulars know about. I remember him saying something about that. Now that he mentions it, did he? I don't remember. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings on. You never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. Well, the room is a secret passage. Where does it go? We'll find out where it goes next time. I'm Extra Sheezy87. Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.